Good day everyone, this is Dr. Soper here, and today I'll be showing you how to create entity relationship diagrams using Draw.io. In case you're unfamiliar with Draw.io, it's a completely free, web-based drawing tool that allows you to create many different kinds of diagrams directly in your web browser. This is great because there's no need to install any software, and you can create and edit your diagrams from any computer that has an internet connection. Although I use Microsoft Visio almost exclusively for several decades whenever I needed to create diagrams for my classes or my research, I've been using Draw.io more and more over the past year, and I've come to really like it, and I hope you will too. So, let's get started. The first thing that you need to do to create an entity relationship diagram using Draw.io is to open the website in your web browser. The URL is www.draw.io. As you can see, the first thing that Draw.io does when you arrive at the website is ask where you want to save your diagrams. For now, I'm going to select Decide Later so that we can immediately begin creating our entity relationship diagram. Here we see the main Draw.io interface which I found to be both well-designed and easy to use. This area in the middle is our drawing canvas, while this pane on the left contains all of the various shapes that we can use to create our diagrams. The pane on the right allows us to change the appearance or properties of the shapes that we add to our diagram. There's also a standard toolbar at the top of the interface that allows us to do things such as saving or exporting our diagrams, opening existing diagrams, etc. To begin creating our entity relationship diagram, the first thing that we need to do is collapse the general set of shapes and expand the entity relation set of shapes. As you can see, Draw.io provides us with a complete set of tools for drawing entity relationship diagrams, including a variety of entity templates and a full set of crow's foot relationship lines. The easiest way to get started is simply to drag an entity shape onto the drawing canvas. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to need four different entities that together will allow me to design a database that can keep track of departments, employees, and employee skills. Now that I have my four basic entities on the drawing canvas, I can define their attributes. The first entity will hold information about departments. I'll therefore double-click on the entity's name and change it to Department. I'll then use exactly the same technique to rename the entity's primary key. Next, I'll add name and phone attributes to the entity. Since I want these attributes to be required, I'll change the typeface to bold. We can do this either by selecting the text tab on the right-hand panel and then clicking the bold button, or simply by pressing Ctrl B on the keyboard. Since I don't need any more attributes in this entity, I'll remove the default row 3 attribute by first selecting it and then pressing the delete key. Congratulations! Our first entity is now complete. Next, let's create an employee entity that will allow us to keep track of some basic information for each employee. As before, we'll begin by changing the names of the entity and its primary key. Now that those tasks are complete, let's define a few attributes for our employee entity. For this demonstration, we'll define a first name attribute, a last name attribute, and an email attribute. Let's also make all of these new attributes required by changing the typeface to bold. To complete our employee entity, we just need to add a foreign key attribute that will allow us to keep track of which employees work in each department. 
Since we don't have any more default attributes available, we'll need to add a new one. You can add a new attribute to an entity simply by right-clicking on an existing attribute and selecting Duplicate. Alternatively, you can select an existing attribute and then press Control enter on your keyboard. Now that we have a new attribute, we can define the foreign key that will link our employee entity to our department entity. We can then mark the attribute as a foreign key by typing FK in the column to the left of the attribute's name. Now that we know how to create entities and define attributes, let's quickly create a skill entity that we can use to store descriptions of the various skills that our employees might have. Our final entity will be an associative entity that we can use to keep track of the skills that each employee has, as well as the employee's level of expertise in each skill. An associative entity is necessary here because the relationship between employees and skills is many-to-many. -many. That is, each employee can have many skills, and each skill can be had by many employees. For this demonstration, we'll therefore create an employee skill entity whose primary key will be a combination of the primary keys from the employee and skill entities. Note that these attributes are also marked as foreign keys, since individually each attribute is serving as a foreign key link back to its parent entity. Finally, let's add a skill level attribute that we can use to keep track of how much expertise an employee has with respect to a particular skill. Now that we've finished defining our entities and attributes, we just need to add the relationship lines and handle a few other details and our diagram will be complete. To add a relationship line, we simply need to drag the relevant shape onto the drawing canvas, just like we did with the entity shapes. As you can see, Draw.io provides us with many different types of relationship lines. It ultimately doesn't matter which one you drag onto the canvas, since you can easily change the cardinality symbols at the ends of each line. I know that the relationships among the entities will all be one and only one on one end of the relationship, and zero to many on the other end of the relationship, so to save some time, I'll drag that particular shape onto the canvas. As you can see, the cardinality symbols are quite small by default, so I'll increase their sizes by using the Style tab on the right pane of the interface. Our cardinality symbols are now much larger and easier to see. Note that we can also use the Style tab to change these cardinality symbols if necessary. Now we're ready to connect our entities. Let's begin by connecting the department entity to the employee entity. The easiest way to do this is by dragging the end of each line onto the relevant key attribute in each entity. Since in this example each department can have many employees, but each employee can work in just one department, I'll drag and drop the one and only one end of the line onto the department ID primary key attribute in the department entity. And then I'll drag and drop the zero to many end of the line onto the department ID foreign key attribute in the employee entity. These two entities are now connected. Next, let's implement all of the remaining connections by copying and pasting our relationship line. You can copy and paste shapes by using the edit menu, by right clicking on the relationship line, or by simply pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V on your keyboard, as you would with almost any other application program. I like to do things quickly, so I'll use the Ctrl C and Ctrl V method. Now that our entities are fully connected, 
we just need to handle a few final details. First, our employee skill entity is a weak entity, since data stored in this entity cannot be uniquely identified by its attributes alone. To mark employee skill as a weak entity, we just need to select the entity and then set its corners to rounded by using the style tab on the right pane of the interface. Finally, the relationship between the department and employee entities is a non-identifying relationship, since the primary key from the department entity is not part of the primary key for the employee entity. To mark the relationship between these two entities as non-identifying, we simply need to select the relationship line that connects them, and then change the line pattern to dashed by using the style tab on the right pane of the interface. Our entity relationship diagram is now complete. At this point, we could save our diagram for later editing by selecting File, Save As, and then selecting a download location on our local device. Or we could export our diagram as an image by clicking File, Export As, and then choosing an appropriate export format, such as a PNG or JPEG file. Well, my friends, thus ends this brief demonstration of how to create entity relationship diagrams using Draw.io. I hope that you learned something useful in this video, and until next time, have a great day.